Hey, what's up everybody? You're watching Ready, Set, Drone, and my goal today is to help new FPV pilots figure out which drone to buy first in order to get the most bang for their buck and learn the quickest and get out there flying the fastest, so stay tuned. So the objective of this video is to help people who are new to FPV or haven't started but want to get into FPV kind of figure out what to buy first and what's the best path for them. So let's start with the DJI FPV drone. This is it right here. This has been out for a year and a half now. It is a pretty cool drone. It's very different looking than other FPV quads. It's quite a bit heavier than other FPV quads, and it does have a place in the lineup here. A lot of people don't like this drone. A lot of FPV pilots don't like this drone for a variety of reasons, but I'm gonna tell you that if you're the kind of person that wants to get into FPV, but doesn't intend to go very far with it. This is designed to make it very easy right out of the box to put on some goggles and have the FPV experience um, using the type of flying that you may already be used to with camera drones. This has GPS, this is stabilized, it has a gimbal in the front so that the image is stabilized in your footage, you can tilt the camera up and down from the remote control. It behaves very much like a DJI Mavic when it's in normal mode. But of course, if you get to the point where you're flying it quite a bit, you can flip over to sport mode and it's gonna go a lot faster and you can have that experience of flying uh, fast with an FPV drone. And of course, if you wanna really get into it, you can switch over to acro mode and this thing will do flips and it's not stabilized anymore. And you can do a lot of the same things you can do with a regular FPV quad. But when this thing is flipped into acro mode, you really need a lot of room to fly it. You need a big, big open space because it eats up the space really fast as I said, it's heavier than every other quad I've got sitting here, and it could actually be quite dangerous if you hit someone or something with it going fast. So if you're gonna fly FPV with this, make sure you have a big open space. But the nice thing about this guy is you can always flip it back into normal mode, and it's very tame. It's very easy to fly when it's in normal mode. It just hovers, it uses GPS, and it flies pretty much like a Mavic, like I said before. So if you're someone who just wants to try out FPV, isn't too interested in getting into freestyle or racing, or anything like that, this might be a good choice for you. Now it's not cheap, it's over $1,000 for the setup, but the setup is turnkey. You can buy the Fly More combo, get three batteries, get spare props, get the remote control, get the goggles, all the cables you need, and then the setup is pretty easy, and you can be flying very quickly, and even if you've never flown FPV, uh, you can fly this thing in normal mode because it literally just hovers if you let go of the sticks. It's just like a Mavic in that respect. Where this thing falls down is if you crash it and you have to repair it, it's not easy to repair. It's not designed to be repaired like some of these other quads are. These have removable arms on them, removable motors, all the parts are replaceable. Most of the parts in a quad like this are very easy to get to, but the parts on this are not. This is not designed for the average person to take apart and repair. So keep in mind that if you are doing uh, flips and rolls and flying this thing in acro mode and you crash, you may have to send it into DJI to get it repaired. That's just one of the downsides to it. Another downside is it doesn't give you a lot of options for flying in small spaces. You really need a big, big open area to fly this thing in acro mode. Now another option for more of a true FPV experience is a tiny whoop. Tiny whoops are also the best option if you're on a limited budget. Like I said, the DJI FPV is pretty expensive. And these others, when you get started, are gonna be a little bit more expensive because you have to buy the goggles and you have to buy the uh, controller and all of that kind of stuff. With the Tiny Whoops, especially the Emax Tiny Hawk, you can get the entire kit right here, ready to fly. It's got the goggles, it's got the remote, it's got spare props, it's got all the batteries, and you can be flying right out of the gate. Now, the downside to this Tiny Whoop and most Tiny Whoops is they are analog and analog is gonna give you kind of a glitchy, sort of um, just analog, dirty signal. And so be aware that if you do decide to go the tiny whoop route, know that you're gonna be able to fly this indoors. It's not gonna do great in the wind. It's not gonna have great range, but it'll be a good chance for you to kind of learn how to fly FPV a little bit through a Tiny Hawk um, and with an all-in-one experience, just right out of the box, set it up, and you're ready to go. Now, if you have a little bit more money, you can spend it on one of these guys. And these are 4S FPV quads. Now the difference between 4S and 6S quads is the battery size. This is a 6S battery, this is a 4S battery. 
Now, the reason I bring these up is this is the essential difference between the types of quads I'm going to talk about next. And what I mean is a 4S quad is typically smaller. This is a 4S quad. This is the GEP RC rocket than a 6S quad. This is also a GEP RC. This is the Mark V. And you can see the difference and the weight. This one is significantly heavier than this one. And this one uses the smaller battery. And this one uses the larger battery. Now, why does that matter? Because a couple of reasons. Number one, with a 4S FPV quad, whether it's this guy here, this guy here, this guy here, this is the Baby Hawk, um, digital Baby Hawk. My point is with all of these, you can fly these around in your backyard. And if you get good enough, you can even fly these indoors without a whole lot of trouble. With a quad like this, again, you need some space. You're gonna need a big open area, uh, preferably over grass, so that if you crash, you're not landing on concrete and breaking things. Um, but this thing eats up space very fast. And with this bigger battery, you're getting a lot more power, a lot more thrust, a lot more acceleration, which is fun. Don't get me wrong. I remember the first time I flew a 6S after I had done 4S's, I was blown away by how much fun it was to fly. They're a blast, but they do require more space for you to fly in. And so if you live out in the country and you have lots of space, a 6S is a pretty good option. But ultimately, where I'm going with all of this, if you are gonna start your FPV journey and you're looking for your very first quad, I cannot recommend strongly enough the GEP RC rocket with the DJI FPV system. This was the quad that got me into flying FPV. And because this thing is so small, I could fly it around my backyard, I could fly it in my house, I could fly it just about anywhere. I could fly it in big fields too. I took this thing to the very first minefield event and this was the quad I flew while other people are flying these big ones. I was flying this little guy around and had a blast. What I recommend if you have the budget and you're not gonna go this route is you pick up the combination which includes the GEP RC rocket, the DJI remote control, and the DJI V1 goggles. And that's the V1 remote, by the way. Now, a lot of people don't like this remote control. They don't feel like it's the best remote control. It has more latency, yada, yada. They're right, they're absolutely right. I love this remote control. And the reason I love this remote control is this one remote control will bind with any of the FPV quads I have here except for this one, right? So if you take this one out of the mix, it'll bind with my 6S, it'll bind with my 4S, it'll bind with my Cinewhoops, it'll bind with my Rotor Riot, the one I built myself. All you need is a quad with an air unit or a Vista unit, and I'll explain what those are in just a second. And this will fly with it. And that's what I love about it. As I can go online, I can look at GEPRC, I can look at Flywoo, I can look at Emacs, I can look at any company that's putting out quads that have an Air or Vista unit in them, and I know it'll work with this remote control. And it's much easier to bind this to these quads than it is to bind any analog quad to any analog uh, controller. Believe me, I've done it and it's generally, unless you know what you're doing, you can't find the button, you have to hold it down and say some magic word at the same time and hope it all works. But with this, it beeps and you're bound. And I love that about it. The goggles, of course, these are the V1 goggles. These also work with all of the air units and Vista units. And so essentially with these two tools right here, I can fly any quad that has the DJI system in it. And they're becoming more and more common. Most uh, companies that make ready to fly quads are putting the DJI system into it. Now, what is the DJI system I'm talking about? There's two types. There's the Vista unit and there's the air unit. The Vista unit and the air unit are basically the same thing, except that the air unit is a little bit bigger and the Vista unit's a little bit smaller and lighter. And the air unit has a slot for an SD card. So you can record video directly from the camera the only way you can record at the Vista unit is to put on an external camera or you can record in the goggles, which will give you a pretty decent recording, but it's 720p, not 1080, and it's not gonna look quite as good because it's being transmitted to you. But it's still way better than an analog goggle recording. So it's just a little silver box that DJI makes, and that little box talks to this remote right out of the gate and these goggles right out of the gate. Now, one other important note about that, this remote, does talk to those um, air units, but a lot of people choose not to use this remote and they install a different type of uh, receiver in their quad. So they might get, uh, 
you know, a Crossfire or LRS or, or whatever other type, FR Sky, whatever other type of receiver, they'll put it in here, you have to solder it in, and then you can bind it to a different radio. And that's fine, that's, that's great, some people like to do that, but if you're a brand new beginner and you wanna be as easy as possible and fly as many quads as possible with one controller, this controller talks to anything with an air unit or a Vista unit, as I said before. And you don't even have to put in a separate receiver. That's the thing most people want to do is either buy it with that other receiver or put one in themselves. I don't understand that. It adds extra weight, it takes extra time, it's more work. Why not just fly it with something that, that works right out of the box? Bottom line, if you, know, if you could just skip to this part of the video, this is what you need to know without all the blobbity blobbity that I had. That is, I recommend either the Gep RC Rocket or the Gep RC Cinelog 30, which is also ducted. I like these ducted quads because they can bump into things and they're not gonna hurt anything and you're not gonna break props quite as quickly as you are with a non-ducted quad. Now this is the, the Emacs Baby Hawk 2 Digital. And I love this little guy, but when you hit something with this, you can very easily break a prop or a motor. I'm not saying this thing's not durable because it actually is pretty durable, but it's not gonna be as durable and it's forgiving bumping into stuff as something like this is. So it's really kind of up to you. These two both have the DJI system. This one has a Vista unit. It's the smaller one without the onboard recording. This one has an air unit. It's the larger one with the onboard recording. But with a Rocket Plus with an air unit, you can actually record straight to the air unit. And so you can get some pretty decent footage. It's not stabilized. It's not the best camera in the world. It's using the onboard DJI FPV camera, but it still looks pretty cool. You can set these up to fly in what's called angle mode, which is stabilized. It's not gonna hover because it doesn't have GPS, but it will stay, keep from flipping over in angle mode. And then you can put it into horizon mode where it'll turn a bit more, but still won't flip over. You actually can do flips in horizon mode, but you, you, when you let go of the stick, it'll level itself. And then you can put it into acro mode and fly it like a maniac, which is really fun. Another thing I'll say too about the 4S quads with the smaller batteries, these batteries are significantly cheaper than these batteries. If you just look at them, there's so much more material that goes into making this battery. I mean, they're basically the same technology, but this has a lot more in it. It just takes more, it's like buying a big truck versus a small car. There's more metal in it in a truck than in a car. There's more material in this than there is in this. And so you can buy two or three of these batteries for the price of one of these batteries, which gives you more flying time. And then one other important thing about the 4S and particularly the one with the ducted props, you can fly this pretty much anywhere. You stop at a rest stop during a road trip. You can pull, out, pull this out, go to the picnic table, fly it around at the rest stop. You could maybe fly this around at a rest stop, but it would, it would draw a lot more attention. It would be a lot more dangerous. You'd really have to know what you're doing to fly this in a place like that. Whereas with this guy, it just kind of looks like a little toy and it still flies great. This thing will still cut through the wind, especially when you're in acro mode, you can do all kinds of things with it. You can fly it in your backyard. You just don't need a big giant space that's completely isolated to fly with one of these. And that's one of the things I love about it. Again, the Tiny Whoops are a very good place to start if you are on a budget and you're okay with investing a little bit in analog, um, but having a ready to fly kit. The DJI FPV is not a bad place to start. Um, if you don't intend to fly a whole bunch of other quads, but you're limited in the quads you can fly. This only works with the remote control and the goggles that come with it. It's, it's a closed system, at least right now it is. That might change in the future. And you can use the goggles actually with other quads, but there's a few steps to make that happen. But with these goggles and this remote control, you can fly just about any digital FPV quad that's on the market in 2022. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Ready, Set, Drone.